Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Sunday English Show. I'm here with a very, very special guest. He is one of the best English teachers in the world, a good friend of mine. He, he has taught me so much. Uh, here is Teacher Mike. Hello, Teacher Mike. Hello. Hey, Robin. Hey, everybody out in YouTube land. It's so good to see you. And thanks for inviting me uh, to this live stream tonight. Uh, we are both in Korea right now, so we do not live in the same city. Uh, I live closer to Seoul. Where Where are you right now, Mike? Um, I live in Incheon, so just a little bit further out from Seoul, up north. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's uh, west of Seoul. Uh, I guess, yeah, there too. <laughs> if you have any questions for Mike, please get them into the chat as soon as you can. I imagine there's going to be a lot of questions. Uh, let's take a look at uh, who's in the chat right now. We have Palavi, who says, hello, teacher Mike. Let's put it on the screen here. Hello, you're my Palavi. favorite teacher. Palavi says, you're my favorite teacher. I love all your lessons. I love you teaching. How long have you been teaching English, Mike? Oh, wow. So I will say I have been teaching now for uh, since about... 2010, so about 12 years, 12 years and, now. And what age groups have you taught the most? Uh, the groups I've taught the most were ele upper elementary, middle school. So uh, around 12 to about 14 years old. And then I've also worked with high schoolers. Okay, we have Layla. Hello, Layla. And Suresh Kumar. I learned English speaking. Yes. Nice. And Yasmina's here. We have Rixmi, Ali Abdi, Lisa. I'm gonna I'm gonna probably miss a few names. Sorry about that. Sleepwalker, Stacy John. Uh, nice to see you again. And Layla comes in. Mike, you have a great sense of humor. Is that true? Are you a funny guy? I think I'm a funny guy. I used to always get in trouble in school because I would always tell jokes when I was a kid. And uh, so ever since being a kid, I've always tried to be funny because a good sense of humor takes you a long way. It really helps out in life. Yes, I think uh, Mike has a great sense of humor. We have Lolly Lolly Lolly. Hello from France. Hello, Lolly Lolly. Hello. Uh, Lolly Lolly is a loyal viewer. She goes to almost every live stream and I'm sure she will watch your live stream. Nice. I used to learn French for about two years in high school. I wish I would have gotten better, though. Uh, I'm Canadian, so French is second language in Kit. Or sorry, French is uh, an official language, not second language. So I learned French uh, in middle school and university, but after coming to Korea, all it's gone. True. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I understand that. Uh, did you live in Japan? I did. I did live in Japan. I lived in Japan for about one year as a college student. Uh, I was studying Japanese every day for three to four hours a day. How's your Japanese? My Japanese, I can still speak Japanese. Um, I even still have my textbooks with me. My Japanese is not as good as my Korean now because once I came to Korea... But when I go back to Japan and use it, then my Japanese comes back. Hello, Dewey. All right. If you have any questions for Mike, get them in. Anna Maria is here. Um, Hello, Anna Maria. And some people. We have Ju Juan Inchon. Yes. Nikki is here. Harry 300. Welcome. Uh... <laughs> English with full culture. Hi, Mark. Mike, what is the difference between simple past tense and past perfect tense using in conversation? Don't answer that, Mike. Ooh, uh, right now, we are not going to answer tense questions <laughs> like this. Sorry, English with Thukal. That's a little heavy uh, for Mike's first live stream. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Another time. Yeah, maybe next week. 
All right, we have lots of people. I I do want to mention at this point that Mike uh, has his own new English channel called Mike's English Lab. Can you tell us about that? Yes. Um, so I um, recently, within the last couple of months, started an English channel uh, just because I enjoy teaching. And um, I really wanted to teach English. As you know, I always, uh, well, not always, but as you know, I speak different languages. So I love language. And um, I love working with other people who love language as well. And so English is something I'm kind of good at. And I say that with sarcasm. Um, I speak English fairly well. So I said, let me help other people with their English also. And so, yes. Are, are you pointing at your muscle here? Uh, yes, I am pointing at my muscle. Why? Um, Why are you doing that? Um, you have big muscles? Because I'm a... I'm, Kind of a dork uh, okay. for taking that pose, but I also like to exercise. So, <laughs> all right. So, yeah, I see you have a lot of shorts there. Uh, how would you describe these shorts? So, I would describe these shorts. A lot of them are used to kind of, uh, I like to encourage people to shorts and studying English. So, I have some encouraging, some encouraging um, English videos. So, for example, this is why you should learn English. That was more of a, video to to encourage you to learn english and for those who are um it's just saying keep going and then some of the other ones some of my earlier ones is just information letting you know um different ways that Eng americans say certain words in english and um and then you see my longer videos so far i'm doing uh <laughs> so far in my longer video are you Sorry. American? Because you wear that American uh, shirt there. Yes, I am American. I, I bought that shirt recently. And so um, every time I wear it, it makes me laugh because I normally don't wear American shirts or American pants. Um, but I thought for the video, just to show that I speak English and teach English, I said, hey, let's wear an American shirt. Which part of America are you from? I am from the Southeast. And and uh, I talked to a lot of people, even over here in Korea. And they're like, where exactly is that? So I live in North Carolina, um, which is in the southeast. So if you have the U.S. map here, then I live all the way down here. So only a few states north of Florida at the very bottom. Okay. So it's very hot and humid over there. You also have another channel called uh, My Coal. Uh, yes. What's that, what's that channel about? So my coal is was my main channel, um, which I've been growing for about five years. But um, I talk about what it's like being a, a foreign guy living in Korea. And so I've done a lot of videos on Korean, some stuff on Korean history, Korean culture. Uh, also, I think one of my most popular videos was I tried on skin whitening cream, <laughs> which just I always just wanted to try it on. Just see what it was like. That, and, that sounds very interesting. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a, it was a fun channel, but right now I'm focusing a little bit more on my English channel for all, all right. of you. And, and you also do Twitch. And I also do Twitch. So yeah, I love playing uh, I love playing games. And so I have my PlayStation Five over here, and um, I play a lot of um, of these days. I'm playing a lot of Star Wars, and uh, I do a lot of like like Resident Evil types, uh, things that people are afraid to play, but so I play it for them. Okay. Wow, <laughs> you have a, you seem to have a lot of energy to do all this stuff. I have a lot of energy, a lot of energy. All right, I'd like to tell the audience that we're also in WhatsApp. Please join our WhatsApp group. I'm going to put, you can find the link below the video, but I'm also going to put the link in the chat here. Please join the group. You can talk to me, Mike, and other teachers uh, at any time. It's a good group. Please mm -hmm, join it. it. We we are there. You can talk to us today. All right. I gotta I gotta go back to the chat here because uh, there's questions coming in, and I'd like to get to uh, the different questions. Give me a moment. Yeah. Not a problem. Not a problem. And again, thank you for for the invite, and thanks everybody else for for showing up to the live stream. You know, taking time out of your day to come and just chat with us. Thank you. Uh, all right. So there was where are you from? We got that America. 
Uh, lots of people want to speak English. Yeah, we're here to help you with your English, with your nationality. Good morning from Honduras. Have you traveled a lot? Uh, I've traveled a lot since living in Korea. And uh, I would say since I moved to Korea, I've been back to Japan, through China, Australia, um, Taiwan. I love Taiwan. Um, where else? Where else? Where else? Where else? Malaysia. No, Myanmar. I haven't gone to Malaysia yet, but I want to. Oh, Actually, no, I'm wrong. I haven't been to Myanmar. I've been to Malaysia because for a basketball you know. tournament. And uh, I didn't play, but I coached. And uh, so, yeah, love it. And then when I was a kid, I used to live in Panama because my dad was in the military. Oh, really? How long were you in Panama? For three years. So did you visit Honduras? I, 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 I go to Panama, Costa Rica, Honduras. Did I wish I did. I didn't. My dad went um, for like a military training but like he left me in panama i really wanted to go but he just like okay. eh, stay home <laughs> well arturo i i've been to honduras i've been to it's a lovely place uh layla's coming in mike could you please let us know about the main reason you that made you le leave the united states of america sure 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 good question uh, the, the main reason why I left the U.S. is because I really uh, love living overseas. I love meeting people from different countries, and I like speaking different languages. And when I live in the U.S., um, I found it kind of hard to be able to do that. And uh, I think because I lived in Japan for one year, I, I guess I got what we call the travel bug. Um, and living overseas and trying a different life, I really wanted to go back to that life. And so when I talked about Japan or I talked about Asia to many Americans, they couldn't understand. Or I could speak more than one language then and many Americans couldn't understand. So I said, I think I should go back <laughs> to Asia. And so I came back over here and uh, and I love it. And I'm pretty sure you understand that too, Robin, just... It's different when you live overseas. You, it's hard to talk to people back home who don't understand you. It's great living overseas. Yes. So happy to see you, Mike, from Anna Maria. <laughs> Excuse me. So happy to see you, too. Raju Online Academy. How can I improve my speaking in, in English, Mike? Hmm. I'll tell you, so this is something, because I'm studying Korean. I have a ton of Korean textbooks behind me. Um, one way that I'm working on my uh, speaking for Korean, and I think it will help you as well with your English, is um, I like to look at some shows on Netflix that I like. But on uh, Google, the like Google extensions, there's something called, um, oh, man, what's it called? Learn English with Netflix. And uh, you can, it's a free download. You can just add it to your Google Chrome extension. And what it do is if you look at Netflix on your computer, it has two sets of subtitles. So it could be your home, your mother tongue, and then it could be the language you want to learn. So I will look at a Korean drama and then I'll have the English and then I'll have Korean. So that way, if I look at it, I can see what they're saying in Korean and see what it is in English. And it's, it's helped out a lot. That's it. Uh, that's it. Learn. I've never heard of this until you mention it. Learn English with Netflix. So this helps you a lot. This it helps me a lot. And uh, what I will do, my personal way of learning, is whatever I want to see, I'll watch it first. So if you want to see a movie, uh, let's say you want to see a Marvel movie, but you want to learn what some of the phrases are, watch the movie first in your language, so that way you can enjoy it. You can enjoy the story. And then watch it a second time, so that way you can learn the actual phrases and, and the language. I want to be an English teacher. Please tell, tell me something about that. Uh, I think Mike and I both have a lot of education in, in education. So uh, RF, uh, I would suggest you get a lot of education about teaching, uh, mm -hmm. especially you can get 
uh, a university education, but if you, if at least you can get a certificate like uh, a TESOL certificate or a CELTA certificate, mm -hmm. anything to add, Ari anything to add, Mike? To Ari uh, no, I think I think you said it. Everything needs to be said. I think um, just that the education is a big part because if you want to, I guess, get into education, it's important to also get ed receive education. All right, another WhatsApp group. Yeah, we have the WhatsApp group. I'll post it again. Please join. Talk to you later. English with, please explain. He's still asking the grant. We are not going to teach grammar today. So I'm sorry. All right, we have a lot of people from around the world. Awesome. Uh, Dewey, hello, Robin and Mike. This is the first time I see you in live stream, uh, Mike. Mike's going to be at a lot of live streams, so get used to him. He will be back here next week uh, teaching. I will. Uh, I will uh, Mike, teaching. do you have some uh, background noise in your room there? What some, did it sound uh, like? Some radio or... I don't, but I'm curious if it's a little bit of feedback from the audio going back into the microphone. Oh, okay. Like I think it. it is. Can you turn off the... Uh, do you have any me. headphones? I do. Excuse me for one second. Let me grab them. All right. I'll take care of the chat. Uh, hello, Caranto. Want to be fluent in English? That's good. What were the hardest part of learning other language? Oh, that's going to be for Mike. We have Emily from South Korea. Hello, Emily. We don't get many Korean fans. Are you both teaching at university? Yes. Uh, I teach at a university. Mike teaches at an international school. Safari. Oh. Thanks. We got people from India, Ethiopia. Found none. Okay. There. Yeah, Mike teaches at an international school. I am back. I am back. Hello. Can you hear me? Can uh -oh. you hear me? Why do I not hear? It's funny. I cannot hear you now with my. Headphones. All right. It's not that. It's not that loud, Mike. Uh, so you, you you don't have to worry about it. We can continue. No worries. I just I just turned down my volume on my computer, so All right. it, it won't go back into mic. Okay. Mike, what were the hardest? What was the hardest part of learning another language for you? Hmm. I think the hardest part about learning other languages, I would say, is definitely the speaking, but more specifically, is gaining the confidence to speak. I think that is, you know, with speaking, we know that you're kind of mixing different grammar with different words all the time. But to get to the point to where you can do that, you have to build the confidence to speak with native speakers. And I think that is really, 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 that's really hard. Um, I think you can do it. You just have to take a risk. You have to have courage and you have to want to make mistakes because the more mistakes you make, the more, I'm not going to say perfect, not perfect, but the more closer you'll get to your goal. The more mistakes you make, the closer you get. All right. Now we have a, a, a serious question. Nice. What are those stickers on your laptop? Mike seems like you like anime so much. Great. Yeah. Let's, so the stickers, um, for those who like Street Fighter, um, these are a lot of Street Fighter stickers. So there's, because it's backwards for me. So let me see. So, of course, there's uh, there's Ryu. Everybody knows Ryu. Oh, that guy. Evil Ryu. 
there's Ken way over here. And then there's um, Violent Ken, who's from another series, but same character. And of course, I have the Korean flag just because, I mean, I'm in Korea. And these stickers are these stickers are my exclusives from my channel. Um, had them made, but never sent them to anybody. <laughs> so I actually have stickers from my uh, Korean channel. And then yeah. Yeah, I have all my stickers back here. So you are a child at heart? I am. You have to be sometimes. So many questions are, are you teaching at a university too, Mike? I said you are teaching at an international school. That's mm -hmm. correct. That is correct. That is correct. And what is your favorite anime? Why do you like it? Oh, man, that's a really good question. Um, I, I, I know Mike loves anime, so I might keep it a short answer. I know you okay, want to we'll talk we'll an, hour, an hour about that. We'll keep it short. Um, my favorite anime is probably Cowboy Bebop because it has a really good story. It's only 24 episodes, and it has all the great parts of what a story should be. Um, good characters, a great plot, and you see characters, the characters change throughout the story and become better. So Now, uh, that's funny, because I don't know anything about Japanese anime, but I did watch Cow Cowboy Bebop, the animation. Oh, you then re recently I watched the live action version on Netflix. Do you see the live action version? I saw the first episode and wanted to finish it just because I just love Bebop. I heard very negative things about it, but um, but I did like the way it looked. Like visually, it looked really good. I like the live action version uh, more than the anime. Really? Uh, which puts me in the very small minority, probably. Uh, but it, I like, but I do like the, I do like the actors, the actors on the show. I really like the actors. So I understand. Hmm. Omar. Hello. I have an English discussion next week about American literature. Can you advise me, please? My name is Omar from Iraq, Baghdad. Uh, he has a discussion. Uh, do you, what kind of discussion? In a yeah. class discussion or club discussion uh, about American literature? Well, read. Uh, mm -hmm. do, you re do you read a lot, Mike? <laughs> I should read more. Um, I don't read enough. But I did buy some books in America, that, and I'm hoping to sit down and read them a lot more. Are you homesick? Sometimes from Lolly Lolly. I used to be Lolly Lolly um, because I haven't been home in because of COVID uh, in about two and a half years. But I just I just came back from America and seeing my family. So I am no longer homesick. I feel great. All right. I'm going through the questions. I'm very sorry, everyone. I'm not going to answer every question. I'm going to choose the questions I think are interesting. <laughs> Uh, although there are some good questions, I also have to consider how long it'll take to answer uh, that question. Uh, Harry 300 again. How to live overseas, actually. Can you share some tips about it? Sure. That's, that's a really good question. Um, I think one of the most important things about being overseas is be ready to try different foods. Um, and some people see it as like, uh, oh, this will be fun to eat different foods. Um, but when you live overseas, sometimes you don't have access to your own cultural foods. And so you have to learn to adjust or you'll eat out with a group of people and they'll want to eat a certain thing. So in Korea, if we go and eat like everybody likes Korean barbecue just because it's just grilled meat. But if you go and eat other things, then it's good to learn to adjust and, and, and try new foods out. And then also just learn the language because language opens up the world. Uh, when you learn a language, you can communicate with different people and more opportunities happen. Uh, Harry 300, I'm going to give you the real tips. <laughs> First, have a big fight with your mom and dad. <laughs> Get on the airplane, go to another country. So you're still angry at your parents. You're not homesick. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's so, 
Mike, do you connect a lot with your family in the U.S.? <laughs> <laughs> I talk to my mom every every other day, or maybe every couple of days. Every couple of days. <laughs> oh, good, good for you. <laughs> Please, sir, tell me how I can learn Korean. It's probably the same way you learn English, actually. Almost the same exact way. Just practice, practice, watch TV, write stuff down, and practice more. The short answer. K Coco Pro Eep. Hello, teacher Mike. Teacher Robin, have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we have uh, hello, Robin and hi Mike from Salome. Salome. Hello. Salime. Hey, D. Al, me. Hey, he. Uh, I know that all English skills are important when it comes to learning English. What is the most important skill we need to focus on more? Hmm. I, I will say uh, there's the four main skills, reading, writing, listening, speaking. And I would say balance, always balance between mm -hmm. the four skills. Uh, a lot of people... They usually ignore writing, but writing helps, you know, all the four skills help each other. So by writing, you're improving your uh, your knowledge of English. You're improving your vocabulary, which will help your speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you, I would say none of them are more important. You should consider them all important and balance them. I completely, completely agree. This is an English teaching live. New here. Welcome. I cannot read your name. Oh, uh, looks like it says, I know the first two characters is heaven. Oh, or it's like sky sky, but I can't read the last one. It's just from learning Japanese and, and kanji. Sky sky. All right, uh, I, I'm gonna try to catch up on the comments. There's a lot of good questions here that I'm skipping. Uh, Lolly, thank you very much for your kind answer, Mike, earlier. Anytime, happily, uh, happily, happily. Mike, Mike's such a nice guy. Uh, I'm, I'm not, right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this is one yeah. reason I'm not famous. <laughs> I try to be nice, I try. It's hard sometimes. What's, what's your favorite game? Oh, favorite game is probably Resident Evil. Just because I like being, I don't like being scared, but I like playing games like that, like kind of horror games. But at the same time, I'm too afraid to play them. That's why I stream them, because other people like to watch. Now, I didn't play the game, but I just watched the new Netflix series, Resident Evil. Did you see that? Did you like it? No. It was yeah, I, I didn't I didn't even touch it. I was like, man. Uh, yeah. Right. What are we learning in this live stream? Uh, you play too many games and watch too much <laughs> anime, and I watch too much Netflix. <laughs> uh, there's, there's some... Uh, here from Salome. Mike, how do you start your day? Do you have any routine? Uh lately, I this is kind of a newer routine for me. Is I typically start my day. Um, let's say I, when I finally wake up and and actually wake up, then I I have like a little planner. So I look in my planner and um, see what's happening for the day. Uh, just because I'm. Oh wait 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 wait! Open it up. Show us a page. So I got to go all the way to the very beginning just because it's so like, for example, like that. Okay. You write it all down for the day. Wow. Okay. Uh -huh. So you, you keep organized. So it's, it's, it's when I get it all done, I don't know if I do everything, but um, I try to write stuff down because for me, my attention span, I it's hard for me to pay attention to a lot of things. And so when I write it down, and then I go back and check, then I can make sure it, it happens. So it's um, it's a skill that I'm trying to grow in. What is the most stuff that you shocked about most? Mm -hmm. Layla, I told you, never use the word stuff. You got to be specific. 
because we don't know what you mean by stuff. That could be food or that could be sports. That could be people. Uh, how would you interpret the most stuff? I, well, here, I'll, 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 I'll fill in a word. Um, so something that shocked me the most when, when it comes to food in Korea, um, I did a YouTube video a while back for a long time ago for my channel where we ate something called bundegi. And Rao, you know bundegi. No, what's that? It's a bundegi is a silkworm. And so we on my channel, we were eating silkworms. And uh, it's canned silkworms. It's not even cooked. It's canned. So I bit into it. And it like when you bite into it, it, it kind of pops. And so then you get canned worm juice in your mouth. And then it tastes like... Yeah, I'll, I'll stop there. It wasn't. It wasn't. I, ne it wasn't I never had that. I never will. Down, down. <laughs> All right. I put the WhatsApp link again. Come into the WhatsApp. Join us. Talk to us at any time. Anytime. But follow the rules, please. Uh, she's asking about Korea when you move to Korea. Okay. Yeah. So the food is the first thing. Um, getting knocked around on the bus in the subway, that was a little shocking just because in America, typically we like to have our space between people. Um, or if you bump somebody, then, well, where I'm from, if you bump somebody, then people say like, sorry, or excuse me. Uh, I'm not from New York. In New York, they bump each other all the time in the streets. But, um, in Korea, in the subways and the buses, like I've been hit on the arms and the back and people, they keep, they keep mm -hmm. going. And that surprised me a lot. One punch. One punch man, one piece. Uh, Naruto. How do you pronounce that? Naruto. Yeah. Naruto. I've yes. heard of these. I've heard of everything here, but I've never seen this content. What, what have you seen? I've My seen, let me see, I've seen all of One Punch Man, um, watch most of Naruto. I haven't seen One Piece because One Piece is like 14, 15 years old and they still come out with new episodes and everything. So it's just too much to catch up on. It's too much to read. And, Nar and Bleach, I've seen a little bit of Bleach. I've seen a little bit. Hi guys, can you rate? Can, how can I write perfect English is very hard for in writing. Perfect English. I can't write perfect English sometimes. Uh, yeah, nobody can write in perfect English. So if you're doing, why, what are you writing for? Whatever you're writing, if it's an email or a academic writing, you, you have to write it, but you also have to edit it. You have to... Mm -hmm. There's programs to help with editing, like Google Docs or MS Word. They will tell you your mistakes. And, uh, you know, it is a skill, and a skill requires practice, so writing. And, of course, you're balancing it with the other skills. So reading will certainly help your writing. Mm -hmm. The more you read, you can see sentence structure, and you can practice those sentence structures and improve your writing. Uh, so... Uh, Tech less and bet. Please start writing every day. Do what you can. How long does it take you to master English? What do you think? Me, Mike? 35 years. <laughs> uh, that's uh, Hadi. You can, how much are you practicing every day? Uh, you know, some people are one hour a week, some people are one hour a day, some people are five hours a day or more. Also, are you in an English speaking country right now or are you not in an English speaking country? There's so many factors that determine how long it'll take uh, and your age. If you're, uh, you know, under 20, you're going to pick up the language very fast. If you're over 40, uh, it's going to be a struggle. Uh, so I think, uh, with two years of consistent study, you would mm -hmm. be in a good place, not master it, but you would be in a good place. 
Hi, Mike. What kind of vehicles you mostly use to travel? Well, do you have a car? I have a car. It's a BMW, right? I wish it was. I, I, it's a Kia. I drive a Kia. One day, BMW. Are you, are you materialistic like that? No, you're not. Mm, no, not really. Uh, my favorite car is a Mustang. So I kind of want a Mustang because I just like the car. But I don't need to drive like I don't have to drive a really nice car. Do they still produce Mustangs? They do. They I do. Thought they, I thought they stopped making those. Uh, what are your plans for the future? Future plans? Stay in Korea? As of now, stay in Korea. Um, I thought about going to Japan, but for a while, I think Korea is perfect for me. No, no plans to go anywhere else. Right. I now. have to tell everyone, uh, Korea is a great country to live. Uh, mm -hmm. It is safe. The people, for the most part, are not are kind and uh, going to help you if they can. Uh, uh, I just love the transportation system. Oh yeah, uh, the, the okay. weather's not too bad. Uh, I don't know what else could you say that's good about Korea. Um, I find that Korea, well, and I, I do enjoy the food. I like the food a lot. Um, the location of Korea is great um, when it comes to traveling as well. Uh, because of COVID, things are a little different now, but it's easy. Normally, if I want to go to Southeast Asia, uh, Incheon Airport has easy flights there. Um, Japan, easy flights. So it's a really nice country overall. It's really good. A lot of teachers come to Japan, Korea. Uh, the main reason is mm -hmm. they pay well uh, compared to other countries. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the primary reason we come over. But of course, once we're here, we fall in love with the place and mm -hmm. uh, stay a long time. And how long have you been in Korea? Ooh, eight years now. Eight, eight years. years. Oh, you're still a newbie. <laughs> As I, I said, I'm not caught up to you. I've been here <laughs> 23 years. Uh, wow. Are you going to be here 23 years? I I don't know if I'll be here that long, but I know <laughs> I know I still have some time left. I have a good amount of time left in me. 23. What's your favorite soda? Maybe they're talking to me because I've been drinking some Pepsi Zero. Pepsi, Pepsi Zero, Zero does not no. sponsor this. Do you drink any uh, soda? Uh, orange, Fanta, and Sprite. Now, here's a question. When you were a kid, what did you call soda? I don't think you said soda. What did you call it? We called it soda. Oh, because... Yeah, in, in, the, in the South, we call it soda. In my Pro region... In my re in my region, we called it pop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, in mine we'll say soda, but then some people will call soda Coke. So, like when you order a Coke, it's a Coke. But if you order a Sprite, they call it a Coke. Okay, it's, it's really well, weird. that's like Korea where they just say cola. Uh huh. Cola. <laughs> where they don't really care if it's Coke or Pepsi. That that mm -hmm. battle that battle didn't come here. No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, but I used to call it pop. But I, I, when I left Canada, I never called it pop again. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, you know, there's regional differences even in North America. Yeah. What do you call? I'm just curious, Robin. Um, when you go shopping, the thing on the wheels that you push and you put stuff inside, what do you call it? Shopping cart. You call it shopping cart? Uh, where I'm from, we call it um, a buggy. A buggy. A buggy. I would. I've never, I've never heard that, and I would never use that. But of course, that is just as valid as a shopping cart. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's American Southeast for you. <laughs> Do you have any plans to travel to Middle East countries such as Saudi Arabia? Says Layla, who is from Saudi Arabia. Oh, wow. Um, I've never um, thought about it, actually, to be honest with you, Layla. I'm not against it. I'm not against it. I just never thought about it. 
but I can imagine uh, it has to be really nice and pretty in Saudi Arabia. I'm sure. I, I think it's a lot of sand. They were in I, the new, They were in the news this week because they want to build that new uh, superstructure called. I think it's called the Line. Have you heard about that? I haven't heard about it. The big city. Okay, only I've heard about it. I trolley. It up, trolley. Did you ever use trolley? No, but I know people who say trolley. Do you consider yourself? Do you speak Korean fluently? No, I would say no. I don't practice Korean enough. Uh, I'm sure all of you practice English enough. For me, I practice Korean. I want to start practicing Korean every day. So at least an hour every day starting off. And that could be reading, writing, um, definitely listening. I think listening is probably my biggest weakness. Uh, just from listening to full speed speakers. Like when speakers speak native, Lee, <laughs> then I get lost. But um, I would say right now I'm not fluent, but I speak well enough. All right. Anna Maria, of course, is always thinking in a negative way. What don't what don't you like about Korea? Ooh, she's trying to. If there's any Koreans in the chat, she's trying to get us in trouble and she's trying out to get of, us out of Korea. <laughs> so, so we're not going to tell the truth. What's the safe answer, Mike? That's the safe answer. Uh, something I don't that I wish Korea had more or differently. Um, Oh, I don't, I don't know. Um, well, I, I, AC, I, I would, air conditioning, air conditioning, uh, air conditioning within yeah. the, within the walls, like um, central AC. So like in America, uh, we have vents in our, in, uh, in the house. So air conditioning comes in from the ceiling, where's the camera, the ceiling or the floor. Uh, but in Korea, you know, like some other parts in Asia, also you have an, a big thing that blows air, like an AC, right? Um, but my current room does not have an AC in it. And so I'm feeling very hot. I, I wish Korea was a little more English friendly. Now, Koreans spend a lot of time and money to learn English, but the country itself is, you still need to speak a, a lot of Korean. Mm -hmm. I wish it was English friendly, more English friendly. They don't have to be, they don't have mm -hmm. to be, you know, it, mm -hmm. they never have to adjust to foreigners. But I wish they did, because uh, some, sometimes it's difficult, even when you're speaking Korean, uh, mm -hmm. for the person you're speaking to, to, uh, I guess, be comfortable around you and really listen to what you're saying. Right, right, right. Japan is, that's a tough one. Um, when I go to Japan, like, and my Japanese is not as good anymore. Um, and their English, almost none. Almost not much English at all in Japan. <laughs> and then you come to Korea and then it's like, oh, wow, there's a lot of English here compared to Japan. But when you go to other countries uh, that might have worse English where they don't study English formally, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's there's more attempts of the general population to try and engage in English mm -hmm. conversation. Uh, not so much in Korea. Again, it's they don't have to do that. It's their right. country. It's up to us to learn their language. Uh huh. If we and that's. Uh, did you learn to sing? I sing in the car. Don't sing that's now, please. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to get a copyright <laughs> strike or anything. <laughs> Why your guests laugh a lot? Mike's a funny guy. I like to live happily. Here you go. Which one do you both prefer, Korea or Japan? Choose now. Three, two, one. Ooh, uh, depends Too on what. Slow. You're thinking. Choose Korea, now. Korea, now choose. Korea, Korea. Korea twice. There you go. Cheaper. It's just, Korea's nice on the pocket. It's nice on the pocket. It's it's a lot cheaper than Japan. So that I that I do like. That I do like. I, I've never lived in Japan, but I have tra traveled to Japan about 10 times. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been all over the country. I love Japan. There's so many awesome things about Japan. Uh, yeah. 
but it is expensive. It's very expensive. Uh, even if you're working there as a teacher, you're not going to save as much as you can in Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's, I would choose Korea. Well, of course, we're both in Korea right now. We made that choice uh, yeah. for whatever reason. But that doesn't mean Japan's bad. Japan is an awesome place to be. It is. Uh, it is. If you have the money. <laughs> it's AV out of money. But it's a cool place. Oh, it's it's interesting. You know, mm -hmm. in Tokyo, it's just so interesting. You know, Korea is interesting too, but we live here and we're used to it. Uh, yeah. But whenever yeah. I travel to Tokyo, wow. Uh, hello, thank you very much for this live. I'll be happy if you do more live prog broadcasts like this. Uh, Mike will be here next week alone without me. Mm -hmm, I will. You'll be with me, everybody. Teaching you English or talking about anime. I don't know what he's going to do, but that's up to mm -hmm. him. <laughs> do you consider Korea is? Do you consider Korea cheaper? No, he is and spelling on cheaper. Do you consider Korea cheaper than the U.S.? When it comes to not fruit, America, fruit and meat is cheaper. In Korea, transportation is cheaper. So it's just some things are cheaper, some things are more expensive. Overall, I like Korea, though. Anna Maria says, not negative. It's just a way to know how good it is. Yes, Anna Maria, I'm just teasing you. <laughs> uh, okay. Do you know? Uh, do you know? I don't know. Do you know? Okay. Because usually I don't get any Korean viewers. So I was wondering if you brought in somebody. Maybe we can get some more. It's hard. Uh, it's what about your uh, Michael channel? That's mm -hmm. do you get a lot of Korean viewers on that? Uh, I do have some Korean viewers. Mm -hmm. A lot of them because my channel is in English. Um, a lot of them speak English or they're learning English, and they know my channel through just knowing me. But they come back and watch because the Shaw English channel, uh, less than one percent would be Korean. That's interesting. Viewers. I never marketed marketed it in Korea, but although the teachers are from here and they're always talking about Korea, it's, I'm surprised they don't get more Koreans. Yeah. Mike, in which app do you learn Korean from? Uh, I use, well, I use more books and TV, but if I do use an app, I use Talk To Me In Korean. Um, they're, they have pretty good resources. For learning Korean, and um, and I met I know the guy who runs the channel as well, and so he's really really nice guy, really cool guy, and so um, yeah, talk to me in Korean. Why don't you introduce me to that nice cool guy? Yeah, I'll have you meet Hyunu. Hyunu is a swell dude. What what did you want to become when you were a child? An actor or a stuntman? More of an actor. Now, there is an acting modeling community in Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, did you or are still doing going out to auditions or uh, trying to get into some Netflix Korea? No, but Netflix Korea, I thought I, I have considered Netflix Korea, but my acting is very underdeveloped. It's not as good. I have to really work on it i'm hoping that on the youtube channel i could be doing more acting and that kind of builds up my acting abilities by being on camera but um i do know that there is a smaller film group in in korea like i forgot soul film club and i know they do small stuff but yeah i will i would love to be on netflix <laughs> i i think you can do it man where's your confidence I would love to do it. I can do it. You can do it. Uh, certainly, I would love to. You just have that charisma that I think people enjoy watching you. It's just you. You haven't. You haven't. Ta you know, I, I don't mean to be negative here. No, we haven't tapped you haven't, into it. Yeah, you haven't tapped in it the right 
exact right way. But when you do, wow. Mm -hmm. Uh, Everyone will see what I see. Thank you, Robin. Teacher Mike, are you seeing my comments? Yes, we see every comment, Mm -hmm. but we Mm -hmm. cannot answer everything, Pallavi. Uh, Do you watch the Japanese anime without subtitles? I used to. I used to now, not as much, but I can still listen. There's and not then, much talking in the Japanese anime, is there? Oh, they do a lot of they do a lot of they do a lot of talking. Um I would say I pick up percentage wise maybe 40% now. Hey Kavinu. Hey Kavinu. What is up? Mike, I need to understand people from Tennessee. I thought oh. I knew English, but their accent is complicated. Any <laughs> advice? Tennessee. Oh my gosh. Um, I mean, I'm from North Carolina, Georgia, so that's right next to Tennessee. I I don't understand them sometimes. So if you don't understand them, don't feel bad. <laughs> that's a that is a southern accent. It's hard. Everybody, they talk like this with or their words go really long and words don't even I said long, but it comes out long. It's hard to I, I think a lot of students don't realize that uh you know in their view there's American and British accent. Mm-hmm. But they don't realize that when you go to America and we'll just t- t- tack on Canada to this. Yeah. There's so many regions. This is a big place with so many mm-hmm. different regions and uh, subcultures and different ways of living. Uh, and yeah, when you go, if I traveled down to Tennessee, I would be like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, and I imagine if they traveled up to northern Canada, they would be what? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, w- I was born in Louisiana. Um, I never went back. But um, I do know of people who have the, um, what do you call it? I guess, like the Creole kind of accent. Because it's, you know, for everyone, anyone who doesn't know, uh, Louisiana, which is in the United States, in the very south, right next to Texas, it used to be owned by the French a long time ago. All right. And I'm so- going to say New Orleans. How would you say it? I because I know folks from Louisiana, they'll say New Orleans. All right, so yeah, New Orleans. I, yeah. New Orleans. New or- I would say New Orleans, and because uh, I haven't been there, that's how I read it. New Orleans, but it's New Orleans. New Orleans. Even even Louisiana, like I say Louisiana, but I know many people who just say Louisiana. Uh, I was at some teacher conference and. They're asking where everyone's from. And this teacher said, I'm from Illinois. Mm. I was like, Illinois? Isn't it Illinois? Illinois? Isn't it Illinois? But he said Illinois. And I was, what? Is that is that a thing? <laughs> Illinois? Like, I'm talking about the state. I- Illinois. Never heard of that one. Never yeah, heard but, of he, that. but he said Illinois. And I was like. Should I correct the person from <laughs> his own country? <laughs> so even in this individual state, there might be uh, variations on mm-hmm. how they how they speak. Are you a coffee person? I'm not. I'm a tea person. Because if I have coffee, I mean, I have a lot of energy already. If I have coffee, then... But uh, tea, tea has caffeine too, doesn't it? It, it? it does. I think from my experience, um, we have a saying, everyone, it's called bouncing off the walls. It means that you're just really high energy and kind of crazy. If I have coffee, I will bounce off the walls, literally. Um, bounce off the walls. Food. What does that mean again? I, I would say it's... Um, it's, you're very high energy, and it's, it's a little crazy. Not crazy in like you're actually crazy, but just like maybe just with the amount of energy you have, it's yeah. very spontaneous. So an idiom, someone with a lot of energy, we're saying they're they're bouncing off the walls. Maybe they have so much energy. 
Uh, Rob, Mike, do you sometimes misunderstand Robin when you talk to him? No, I, think uh, you. I think teachers teachers can talk to teachers wherever they are in the world. Mm -hmm. We have this. We know how to talk to people to be understood because we have to talk to our students. Yep. <laughs> uh, and certainly Mike's not using his regional accent that probably it's cleaned up a bit. Oh, yeah. It's cleaned and, up. You know, when I was up until age 12, I said one, two, three. Really? Because uh, my city had a lot of Eastern Canadians and mm -hmm. Eastern Canada. They speak really wacky. Uh, if they're watching, they're going to hate me. But yeah. anyway, they, they speak. To me, it sounds more like Irish. Uh-huh. So they, say, but, they, but, one, they say one, two, three. So a lot of my friends were from Eastern Canada. So I said one, two, three, like them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had a stepdad that can know that's unacceptable. And also the step because my stepdad was from England. So he if oh. I said if I said ain't, I, I he would go crazy. He would, he would not allow me to say ain't. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your feeling about ain't? Um, I don't use it normally, but it wouldn't surprise me if I'm with my family and it comes out. So it's, it's one of those words that I feel like I would use with a small group of people who maybe have a similar dialect and ain't now, slip out, but I would never use it for anything. If, if you had a student who started using it, would you say, keep using it or stop using it? I would say be aware when and how you use it. It's kind of like the whole idea of code switching. I would say most of the time you won't use it. But if you ever do use it, just understand who you're using it with. But it isn't the best English to use. Does that make, if that makes sense? Because uh, uh, a lot of students listen to American music and ain't is all through oh, American yes. uh, songs. Uh, I don't allow my students to use it. Mm -hmm. So I th naturally they'll pick it up if they're in America. Right. So I, I but I want to I want to be I want to try to train them not to use it. But if they're in America, they use it. It's fine wherever they are. Right. right. So but, I try to focus them on more uh, stricter speaking rules. You're right. Right. Was I I was talking to you about um, where I mentioned like following the rules, but then later, after you learn it, then you bend them. Who was I talking to? Uh, I thought I thought it was you, but I would say, been. like, whenever you're learning a language, like fluent speakers, like native speakers, um, we know the language, so that way we can bend it. We can bend the rules. We don't break it, per se, but we can bend it. And I think it's the same whenever you're learning a, a new language. When you start to really understand it, then there's some then you can go back and kind of bend the, the rules for the language. Yeah. I love I love Layla's question of I understand all English accents, British and Australia. <laughs> yeah, she's practicing a lot. Um she's in the group, Layla and yes. Maria. They're there in the group talking with you. I see Layla all the time. Her and Anna Maria always talking. And Mike, have you visited? Oh, she came in late. Mike lived in Panama. Did she? Uh, Anna Maria is from Colombia, not oh, British so Colombia. <laughs> Colombia. Have you oh. been there? Um, I don't. I don't remember because I was young. Because Panama is right um, north of Colombia, but there's so, no road. I, I don't think that. There's no road connecting them. You got to oh, take really? it. Uh, yeah, you can't drive from North, from Central America to South America because there's that jungle area where the drug mm -hmm. cartel doesn't allow any uh, development. Oh, so, well, in that uh, case, no. I've never so, been. So from Panama, you would have to take a ferry to Colombia. Oh, well, then no. I've never been. <laughs> Are you... Are, are you guys using idioms a lot whenever you have a convo conversation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Certainly if you're not now, but mm -hmm. certainly if two native speakers are speaking, uh, there's going to be a lot more slang, uh, idioms and cultural references. Uh, mm -hmm. that they would be hard for you to understand everything. Yes, I use a lot of idioms whenever I talk to people. Um, some idioms are regional idioms, idioms that you would normally hear back from where I'm from. And then sometimes they're idioms that most English speakers use. Eunice, hi, Robin. Hi, Mike. The lesson about passive voice was amazing. Thanks. Thank you. What was your feeling when Robin asked you to do an interview with you? I was like, oh, yes, I am there. Like as soon as as soon as Robin asked me if I want to do an interview, immediately I was like, yes, absolutely. So I, I'm enjoying just hanging out here with you all and just talking. All right. Well, we're going to wrap this up in a minute or two. So get any final comments into everyone. Reminder, Mike has his YouTube channel. Links are below this video. Mike's English Lab. He's, he's starting his own stuff there, and he's a funny guy. So please go uh, subscribe and watch his videos. Uh, also, we have our WhatsApp group. Links are below this video. Join the WhatsApp group, and uh, you can talk to Mike, me, and other teachers anytime. Of course, WhatsApp group has a lot of rules, so please keep the rules or you will be mm -hmm. kicked out. Uh, Mike, do you have any final comments? Um, I really just enjoyed being here with you all. It was great. Um, I'm in the the um, WhatsApp group, so if you're, if you're not in it, you have to join them. Um, but I'm being in there and kind of chatting with everyone there, and it's just overall such a great community. And um, I love that. Oh, and Steve Mark wants to know if I have streams on my channel. On my old channel, I did streams. I will do streams on my new channel. Um, Sleepwalker also asked if I have any funny stories that's happened to me as a teacher. And I think that's a great thing to do for a stream is even to have story time. And so All right, we'll I think that would be a great thing. But... All right. All right. Thanks a lot, chat. Everyone's here and we'll be in the group to talk to you. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Mike will be here next week with his own live stream. So uh, please come back next week and learn something from Mike. So thanks for watching, everyone. All right. Thank thanks. you. Thanks for being here, Mike. Thank you. Anytime. All right.